Greetings, viewers. Well, never say never. I really try to make a point. Uh, occasionally, I'll say, well, I don't think so, or mm, most likely not, but I very seldom will say never, because like Alan Watts says, the universe jiggles, it does a dance, and just when you think that nothing could ever happen, it's going to jiggle itself into a place you didn't expect. So, the two things that we weren't looking forward to see here this year so far was one, water tank trucks, boy oh boy are they running up and down the roads here, and mangoes. <laughs> mango flowers right Gracie yeah. yeah we got mango flowers I will almost always say when people ask me Bill can you grow mangoes here in Pune or Hilo I'll say nice you know <laughs> most varieties no most of the varieties of mango are the uh, South Indian varieties and those are adapted to uh, seasonal rainfall patterns okay and so we don't really have a seasonal rainfall pattern here in Puda and Hilo. The rain comes and goes pretty much year-round whenever it wants to. And so that causes a big problem for the mangoes. The mangoes will come into flower, the rains will come, and the rains destroy the flowers. No mangoes. Okay. Now, there are parts of Puna, way down south over here in Kalapana, where the rainfall was about half, probably about the same as it is in Kona, and they can raise mangoes there and they raise mangoes over in Kona too because uh, they get a dry spill during the bloom that's what it's all about but we have seen dry spells here in January and February in the past on this side of the island and we are really having one right now I tell you and so when your catchment tank runs empty in winter you probably will have mangoes in your mango tree I took a drive into Hilo yesterday because I had to get some stuff and oh, there's there's uh, mango trees uh, they're probably seedlings I don't know what their origins are but there's mango trees up and down the median on Highway 11 as you go between uh, uh, Keao and Hilo. There's a few jackfruits in there too, if you pay attention. But there is a lot of mango trees through there. And the mango trees are ordinarily barren. They don't have anything on them. They grow well here. They're big, eh, nice trees, good looking, uh, and so on and so forth. But no fruit usually. Well, I went through yesterday, and the flowering in those trees, my goodness, I've really never seen anything quite like it here uh, on this side of the island before. It's heavy, and as long as things don't turn around and start getting wet suddenly in the middle of the bloom, looks like Hilo and Puna are going to have one fine mango crop this year. Now, there are mangoes that I tend to refer to as the jungle mangoes, the ones that come from, you know, Indonesia and Java and down to the south um, in the Pacific there. Uh, those are more adapted to uh, uh, rainy climates, and those will tend to fruit here. Uh, Lajiwa does. Um, uh, so does Kasturi. Uh, these, there are some mangoes that do work here. <laughs> Again, never say never. Uh, because anyway the weather's just right this year that I got a feeling just about any mango is gonna fruit around here so if you're lucky enough to have an old mango tree hanging around your yard well look up don't get hit in the head <laughs> oh well, that and it, well when the mangoes do good the catchment tank goes empty uh, it's, uh, I would not want to be on the other side of this island, which we tend to refer to as the dry side, the leeward side. Uh, I would not want to be on that side um, having catchment water. Um, it's got to be a real problem. You would need an awful large tank to keep up from the dry spells. We don't usually get too much dry spell on this side, but it's easy to say for the past month, the rainfall has been less than one inch for the last month over here. It's mostly measured, you know, in a tenth or maybe two tenths here or there. Um, for the most part, probably, um, well, out of 30 days in a month, I'd say at least 25 of those days didn't have any precipitation at all. Um, 
you know, you guys out in Arizona and stuff are going, <laughs> big deal, Bill, right? Yeah. Well, you know how it is, man. Every place on earth gets used to however that place on earth is in general. You know, it's like when you get uh, uh, ice storms down in Mississippi and black ice all over the roads. What do you do? <laughs> you spin out because they aren't ready for it. You know, well, it's like in Florida. You, you know, if you get a, a freeze down to 20 degrees in the central part of the state, what do you do? Watch the stuff die. <laughs> you know, uh, it's kind of the same over here. Uh, it goes and gets dry like that, and they just kind of run out of water. Now, I am lucky guy in the sense that we made our plans when we bought this property that we wanted to have both catchment and uh, deep well water from the county and we do we have both of them uh, it cost a bit to do that and uh, the, but well worth it and nothing like having plenty of water all the time now I got all kinds of water, but some of my neighbors are actually dropping in here to get a little water off of me. Um, and I'm watching the trucks. Uh, there's two two kinds. There's the commercial haulers, and they have actually, you know, regular tank trucks. Um, stainless steel, or in, I think some of them look like they might be even fiberglass tanks or poly tanks. I don't know what they all are. But they haul water commercially. I am told that... Uh, uh, a uh, tank full of that water delivered is about 300 bucks um, I, I don't know that for sure <laughs> okay because I don't buy it I, I get mine from the county and it's a lot cheaper and it comes up a pipe <laughs> not in a truck uh, but uh, yeah I'm told that's the price on it and otherwise what I'm seeing is pickup trucks pickup trucks pickup trucks pickup trucks with uh, uh, tanks in the back usually uh, those food grade tanks the ones that like in california used for olive oil big square jibes with a metal frame on them on a pallet yeah you, you can buy them here <clears throat> yeah, i'm seeing a lot of those boy you can tell too which truck is a three-quarter ton which is a heavy three-quarter and which is a half ton because all the half tons are riding like this with a tank of water if they're going in when they're coming out they're flat again <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, well, eight pounds to a gallon, huh? Those tanks must hold at least 200 gallons, I imagine. So, that's a lot of weight. <laughs> that's a lot of weight. It's more weight than your half-ton pickup will tolerate. I guess if I had that situation, I'd, I'd probably have a heavy-duty trailer mm -hmm, with a tank built right on the darn thing, you know. Uh, it's easier to haul a large amount of weight with a truck when it's on a good trailer than when it's in the truck box. Yeah, you could, you could pull several tons uh, with a half-ton pickup if it's behind you, <laughs> but you can't if it's in the box. So that's probably what I'd do. I'd just be ready for it, you know. It happens every once in a while. It's not... How do we do? It's not the common weather here that we get these dry spells, but they do happen. I've seen them when they were pretty intense, too. Yeah, I've seen this little crack here. Um, I've seen uh, plants defoliating due to lack of water. You know, like I say, everything gets used to the conditions. And, well, around here, water is abundant most of the time and because of that you will find that the uh, um, the plants tend to not grow deep yeah the water's right there on the top they don't need to go down to find it you know in a more droughty type of a climate plants tend to grow downward gradually with their roots you know seeking the water as it's retreating in the soil well it doesn't retreat in the soil much here uh, at least not often enough that the plants train to it and so they don't there, they were laying right there on the surface. Um, the uh, nutrients, in fact, any nutrients we have here in the soil are, again, right on the surface. You know, dead leaves, earthworms, you know, that kind of stuff, bird droppings. Um, that's right there at the top. And there's nothing down deep. Uh, and, then, and then when it really gets raining around here, anything below a few inches in the soil is so waterlogged it becomes anaerobic and so the roots don't go down there for that either because there's no gases in the soil 
So things are really shallow and when it starts to dry out around here, man, it don't take long. Even on my quote-unquote deep soil, we, we got 16 foot of volcanic ash on this place and generally speaking, most of my plants grow 16 inches into the stuff and that's about it. Um, I have moved a few larger, older plants around here in the past. I've moved some cacao at one point, and I moved some blueberries. Quite a few blueberries got moved one time. And, uh, it, it, you know, it was like moving a rug. They were like this deep in the ground, only, you know, less than six inches in the ground for the roots. But a huge spreading mat, and I just find myself dragging <laughs> these things like I was dragging a bare rug across the landscape. And they just kind of flopped them uh, <laughs> where they went and let them grow back in. Yeah, nothing gets deep, so when it gets dry... We get drought much easier than somebody in California or Arizona might. Because there your citrus trees and such, they're grown down pretty deep in the soil. Chasing moisture that might have been retreating from the winter. Mm. Yeah, they, they get deep enough. Uh, citrus aren't notorious for being deep-rooted trees. But in California and Arizona and other dry climate states, uh, those trees will gradually train uh, to be down there. They don't do it here. Mm -mm. Rain stops, trees go, oh, oh I'm thirsty. Yeah, so there you go. Never say never. I have a feeling that we're going to be seeing mangoes this year. Um, and so y'all who are allergic to poison ivy, you remember, mangoes are in the poison ivy family. And so be careful uh, around the stem end and things like this. I, I have a, a, a son who, if he gets too close to the stem on a mango, his lips puff up. Uh, yeah, some of us are very susceptible. So if you end up with a lot of mangoes, make sure you're not allergic to poison ivy. Aloha. Hang loose, folks.